Hey guys, I wanted to do a video and uh, share with you the uh, very simple and what I consider dirt cheap uh, alternative energy sustainable heating and cooling system that I learned about recently. So I did quite a bit of research uh, before I actually did, uh, before I installed my own system. So uh, you've probably heard of geothermal, uh, which is um, not that well known, but it's starting to gain some traction. Um, but basically, the principle is that the ground temperature, once you get down to about six feet, stays very consistent throughout the year, between about 50 and 60 degrees. Uh, depending on the time of the year and where you're at in the country. So if you're further south, it'll be a little bit warmer. If you're further north, it'll be cooler. Uh, near Chicago, where I'm at, it's, it's about 54 degrees uh, year-round. Okay, so, um, so with geothermal um, it, heating and cooling, it basically takes advantage of that consistent ground temperature and the way the conventional systems work is they drill into the ground they put in uh, typically three-quarter inch um, water tubes they fill those tubes with antifreeze and then they circulate it through the ground well the the antifreeze uh, that the heat transfers from the ground to the antifreeze then they run the antifreeze through a bunch of very expensive equipment like heat pumps and condensers and compressors and all of this stuff and extract the heat uh, and uh, heat your house with it or um, they also use it for air conditioning as well so the um, the big challenge with with those systems is that all of that equipment is very expensive and you're not going to install that system yourself unless you really have a good knowledge of it so uh, beyond the reach of the average person and uh, so the the difference with the system that I just installed is that I was able to do um, I'll work myself except for the excavation which I left that to uh, my neighbor with his backhoe. Um, other than that I did uh, everything myself and it was very simple to do and it was very inexpensive so I'll get into those details here in a little bit. But the gist of this system, the real difference between this and the typical geothermal heating and cooling system is this system uses air to transfer the heat instead of antifreeze. And so instead of using three quarter inch tubing, um, I used and, and uh, others that are installing these systems are using four inch ABS corrugated drain tubing, which you see here. And um, so the tubing is, is buried six feet underground and then the ends of the tubing come up into uh, the structure that you're cooling or heating. Then a, uh, a blower or a fan is used to circulate the air in that structure through the tubing down underground and when it comes back out the other end it's typically between 45 and 60 degrees depending on whether you know you're heating or cooling so that's pretty much it um, so the applications for this um, the one thing that you can't do with the system which you can do with um, the liquid geothermal systems is you're not going to heat a house with uh, 50 uh, degree air so um, that's one limitation, although you can supplement. Um, so, but the, the applications, the main applications that, that uh, this is used for are um, for keeping buildings um, warmer than 
um, they would normally be, obviously, um, especially in the winter time. So your garage, let's say your garage is unheated, and it's not going to be much warmer in your garage than it is outside. Okay, so if you can keep your garage or your pole barn or your shop or your shed at uh, 45 degrees, then that's going to be a reasonably uh, comfortable temperature to, to work in. And uh, what I'm using it for right now, the first install, is for my greenhouse. And the big challenge with growing in northern climates um, outside of the typical growing season is that it's just too expensive to keep a greenhouse warm enough to grow plants in. And nobody wants to pay for a uh, $100 a month uh, electricity or, or uh, heating bill for the greenhouse. So they don't do it. So with this system, um, the only electricity or the only fuel that's used is to run the blower or the fan, uh, which um, is, is really minimal compared to any other type of um, heating or cooling system. So those are the um, those are the main applications. The other application is for cooling, um, or I should have said the the uh, the main heating applications. the The other application for this is is really cooling any structure, uh, even your home. So if you can um, put seventy five or eighty degree air. Uh, into the tubing and then it comes back at 55 degrees that's gonna it's gonna do a good job of, of cooling your space so I've already I've already tested that and it, it works well um, so and of course you could cool any building it could be your garage your pole barn or your greenhouse um, for that matter so and uh, so let me tell you a little bit. Oh, um, the other aspect, which I forgot to mention of this system, is that in the winter time, for example, um, if you're using it to keep your greenhouse warm at night, during the daytime, if it's sunny out, your greenhouse will typically overheat even on really cold days okay so it could be zero outside and your greenhouse could be at 90 degrees so at that point you can take that 90 degree air and you can blow it down through the tubes to cool off your greenhouse well, what happens is that 90 degree air gets transferred into the ground and the ground acts like a like a heat battery so it stores the heat so that at nighttime when the greenhouse cools off then you can circulate the air down and pick up that heat that you stored in from earlier and now that's not absolutely necessary but it will improve your nighttime temperatures um, so of course that's really um, a greenhouse application because your garage is probably not going to pick up a whole lot of heat when it's sunny out um, or your pole barn or whatever so um, but for for the greenhouse application that's definitely a, um, a significant benefit and um, a greenhouse can collect a just a boatload of heat just to give you some idea put it in perspective a little bit uh, my little 8 by 15 greenhouse will collect about a million BTUs on a sunny day in the winter time okay so um, that's a lot of BTUs put it that way that's a that's a lot more BTUs than you would need to um, heat your house for for the whole day so um, the uh, so let me tell you about my installation so that you can so that you can get an idea of what kind of results you know you can get with this so um, I built a after I installed 
um, the tubing. And by the way, I used 200 feet of, of the tubing. I uh, had two levels, one at six foot and one at four feet. And that um, was really just to kind of um, compact the system. If you if you had 200 feet of tubing and you put it all down at six feet, you'd need a trench that was, or a pit that was twice as big. So you lose a little bit of heat because you're at four feet with the second level, um, but it's not worth digging, you know, a pit that's twice as big. So, so anyway, two levels, a uh, hundred foot of tubing in on each level, one at six foot, one at four feet. And then I have um, a I have two 50 watt fans that uh, circulate the air. So the um, by the way, if you're wondering what the cost of the installation was, which I'm sure you are, uh, the total cost including fans, the tubing, the excavation, and uh, just accessory parts. Uh, for the install was just over three hundred dollars. Okay, uh, of course I had a neighbor to do the excavation for me for two hundred bucks. The tubing cost eighty bucks. The fans were like fifteen bucks a piece, and then just um, just some miscellaneous parts. Um, and by the way, to run those fans twenty four seven. Um, the total, the the electric cost to run those fans is about five dollars a month, so it's it's pretty minimal. And those aren't real efficient fans. Um, I will probably upgrade to some better fans. It'll be much more efficient and cut that number probably close to in half. Um, so, but what I was able to achieve with the system, I just actually I just got it in. Um, the beginning of, of spring in 2015 and I put up the single layer polyfilm greenhouse because I wanted to test this system before doing a permanent install and there obviously the beginning of the spring there's not that many days left to really test the heating system so um, last night for example it got down to 22 degrees and the greenhouse the lowest temperature in the greenhouse was 37 okay so we're talking a 15 degree differential there and keep in mind that this is just one layer of plastic um, the the uh, permanent install the, the permanent greenhouse is going to be um, much more insulated than that and so based on the, my calculations on a night like last night when it got down to 22 the uh, the finished greenhouse uh, should be around 41 to 42 degrees okay so that would be about a 20 degree differential so um, and that's not even including optimizing I need to I need to um, like I said get a better fan and there are some other things once I don't have any plants in there um, once I do all those things I'm gonna add some uh, 55 gallon drums full of water which will add to the, the heat storage once I do all of those things I'm expecting probably a 22 degree differential so so in other words, when it's 22 degrees outside, I'll expect it to be 44 degrees in the greenhouse, okay? Which means that it's going to have to get really, really cold um, for that thing to freeze. And, uh, and by the way, um, what is, is very typical is that the lower the temperature, the outside temperature, the lower the outside temperature, the bigger differential you're going to have between the outside temperature and the greenhouse temperature. So it might be, the differential might be 22 degrees 
when it's an, on an average winter night, but it may be more like 30 degrees on a really cold night. So um, those are the numbers that um, I've seen more than once, so I'm pretty confident that, um, that that's the case. And at the same time, on warmer nights, when maybe it only gets down to 30 degrees, uh, you won't see as big of a differential. So it might only be 15 degree differential. And um, so a lot of factors that come into play there. But in general, um, like I said, right now with a single layer of, of polyfilm, I'm getting a 15 degree differential. And that number should, uh, you know, I should bump that up by about 50% and get it to, uh, you know, in the low 20s, which is phenomenal. Um, basically, that means I'll be able to grow uh, plants year-round without uh, any supplemental heat, except on extremely cold nights, you know, when it's sub-zero. So, um, so those are my results up to this point, and I've I've done several testing sessions, and the numbers are are uh, pretty consistent. And um, I guess that's pretty much it. But uh, if you have any questions about this system or um, comments, you know, please leave them below. I'll be happy to share any information I have. And uh, if you like this video, I definitely would appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, and if you want to keep updated on how the system's working once I get the permanent greenhouse in, um, and other other uh, videos on similar topics, um, please hit the subscribe button. So thanks for taking the time.